Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different tabletop project on Kickstarter every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Really break down that Kickstarter and give you my honest thoughts on how that Kickstarter is being ran. So if you enjoy that kind of content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Or if you're interested in having a fiver done on your game, click on the fiver link down below. But right now, I'm very excited, like super stupid excited, to be checking out Kiwi Chowdown because it currently is the second most popular project on all the Kickstarter right now. Like, bigger than Mystery Science Theater, bigger than my father's work, bigger than these million dollar dice. So I am so curious to see what they're doing so well that they have just cut the line on everybody else. So let's check this out. Uh, feed, Grow, and Push, or Explode, a bombastic game for one to four players with. So <clears throat> I will say... You know, right now I see some, some minis here, four minis. I see some interesting artwork. I see different countries, which is good. Fun in one hour. Nobody really cares. Unfortunately, you know, that's kind of been abused by everyone else who've made, like, you know, $6 pledge goals. Like, we funded eight seconds. Uh, so nothing particularly right now is drawing me into this Kickstarter. So I'm very interested to see what's going on inside. All right. I'd love to see a price here. I'd love to, and this is what I mean by this. Like, I'd love to see a price here. I'd love to see a player count here. I'd love to see a time here. But funded one hour. You want to show me that? And then you do have a joke, which I'm cool with a joke. So 928 backers, $59,000. So as always, when I go into these videos, I'm thinking of three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? And how much is it? You need to convince me of at least one of those three things. Like, you should be trying to convince your audience of that in these videos. Hopefully you do it. Let's go. A place where kiwi live in harmony. A place where kiwi are plentiful every season. A place where kiwi love kiwi. They love them so much, they fight kiwi for love of kiwi. In this game, you play with kiwi against kiwi. To eat more kiwi than the other kiwi, what? we call it kiwi chow down. A game for kiwi lovers who are willing to fight other kiwi. Holy kiwi. shh. Did that say? Did did that just say ninety minutes on that box? Uh, yeah, that's that's a nine. That's not the time I was expecting. Okay, continue. For Kiwi, Kiwi Chowdown includes everything you need to play: Kiwi Island, Kiwi Counters, Kiwi Tokens, Kiwi Scoreboard. Oh wow! In the end, the Kiwi with more Kiwi domains wins. Okay, so here's what I immediately do not like about this Kickstarter is. If I look at this, and to be quite frank, if I'm not a family gamer, or like a really light gateway gamer, or if I have kids, I'm probably not even clicking on this link. Because look at that main image. That did not scream 90 minutes, you know, medium weight strategy area control game to me. Uh, maybe you might want to just let people know that a little bit earlier on. Like, I thought maybe it was gamery because it did have a solo version of it. But once again, there's so much information you can put, you know, on that main image, and you didn't put much. This is the new chapter of the Preacher Kingdom Saga. You can ah. always make it a reality in Kiwi Starter. Kiwi, go again. Okay, okay, so there it is. And that's why it's so popular, uh, because this is the third in a trilogy, it looks like. And that makes sense. And that actually gets me really excited about this. The fact that, you know, the people from these first two campaigns are like, all right, we're here, we're here immediately, we want to support this, we want this to be big, we love the original two so much. So that does get me excited about this. Um, so, do I want it? Yeah. I do. As someone who loves medium weight, you know, medium weight area control games, sign me up. But I'll be quite frank, I was expecting this to play this with my five and my eight year old uh, when we first got into it. So it's a pleasant surprise, but can uh, can you do it? I'm leaning towards yes, obviously, because you've released two other games. But as always, we come down here, we see six created, we see 48 back, and that looks good. That looks like a company that you want to support on Kickstarter. And I always say that, back a bunch of stuff, even if it's for a dollar. So we have Backer Kit, Pam, Draco Studios, Caroline Pritchard. Head of, so we have three people uh, in addition to the creator who could potentially be doing customer service. So hopefully we should have some good customer service here. I'll take a look at the website. Always nice to take a look at the website because it really does uh, strengthen the can you do it case. Uh, join us on the test table. The test table. Uh, okay, so this is not in English. Okay. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Anywho, let's look at this. Uh, Dodo's Riding Dinos. Let's make sure this is out. Quetzilla Award 2008. Roll a game. Oh, this is for a convention. Manufacturer. Wait, wait. Manufacturer for the award held at Roll a Game Expo. What? Okay, not sure what that is. 
so here we go. Let's just make sure this game is out. 3,250... 3,000 comments. Let's check it out. Queep, queep. That's a good sign. No, like, legitimately, that's a good sign. Uh, the fact that they're joking in the comment section. That's always a good thing. Uh, what is this? Yeah, we're, we are 14 hours away. Oh, oh, these are people excited about the launch. Hi, Romy. Here's, uh, for the next game, how to play... Okay, wow. This is, this is cool. This feels like much more of a, an interesting... Oh, these are, these are very few people here. But either way, these are loyal fans here. This is great. And I know it's not... The thing I'm looking for is it's not a flaming dumpster fire. All I want to know is, is the game out? Is your last game pushed out the door? Because I feel like that's an important thing for people to know. How many games you have pending. Photos from mass production plus Kiwi Chowdown is live. Today is a great day for the Creature Kingdom universe. Finally, we received photos from the factory. We will say no more. Go on, please, and take a look at the magic. So these... Okay, so this is not out yet. Okay, so they do have one that is currently pending. Because this is important. Let's go check it out. What's the next one? Uh, let's make sure Cooks and Crooks is released. So six of them. And one of those, that's interesting. There was three games in that trilogy, and I don't see the first game. So where is that game? That's kind of odd to me. Let's make sure, we're just making sure this is out. So updates, 36, the Dinos Ride, Race Begins, Profile Name Change. Uh, fulfilled, 90% fulfilled, so yes. They did it. They so they have one game pending. That's not bad at all, and that leads me to believe: Can you do it? Is a check mark. It's a yes. Now, why do I keep track of? Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? That's because I have a rating scale: a zero, a one, or a two. A zero means this Kickstarter is not even worth your time a day. Just keep on keeping on. One means yeah, give it give it a look around, go watch gameplay video or something, and then decide. You know, back it for a dollar, come back to the last forty eight hours, make a decision, and then two is just back it for the whale, comfortably knowing that. Do I want it? Can you do it? And how much is it? Are probably going to be answered. So we start off with right here, next stretch goal. And this is what I love. And I say this all the time. I always say, put the stretch goals higher. And they did. Next stretch goal, embroidered cloth bag. Excellent. Excellent. I love this. That's, that's a great little stretch goal. I would like to see when we unlock that stretch goal. A number would be great here. Follow this project's daily progress on KickTrack. Okay. And, and what I'm really trying to do here is I'm not trying to discount anything at face value because... Like I said, that seems odd that that's right there, but there's a reason that they're number two on the popularity. Why are they number two on the popularity when they only have sixty thousand dollars and nine hundred thirty-six backers? You know, that's a great; those are great numbers. But why are those so great that they that they go past million-dollar dice kickstarters? I mean, okay, so here we go. We got the shot of everything set up. Cool. One to four players, ages ten plus, ninety minutes to play. I'd love to see a price. Right here. Just price me one time. Hopefully we also see a better component list here. Kiwi go again. First it was chickens, then dodos, and now it's all about kiwi. Kiwi eating kiwi fruit to be precise. Kiwi Chowdown is a fast, fun, and fruity area control game. Completes the Avian Trilogy. And once again, I, I would have really mentioned in that first little excerpt, you know, area control game or something. Because I want to go back to that. Because I felt like you totally did not use that space very well. Uh, so let's go to games. We'll go to popularity once again. We'll take a look at that in a second. If I remember, I might forget. No keywords are harm to the making this game. Cool. You got more humor. You know what I want? I want a price. Can you do it? Yes. Do I want it? Yes. Like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty convinced. I'm ready. My wallet is kind of open. Maybe with a gameplay video and a couple quotes here or there. Project has friendly shipping. I'm glad you're telling me about the friendly shipping. Um, I'd, I'd love it even more if you told me about the price. So here we go. Now, once again, we and we go to this shot again. Why do we have another of this shot? So it's the game set up, and then it's the game set up, but with a slightly different angle? Like, why is this the play? I don't understand that. Oh, because now you're actually focusing more on the components up close, but it's still, it seems redundant to me. How about you just slap on a price right here, and then as I scroll down, I get to see all these gorgeous-looking things. Or maybe you even have it set up, but then it's like you start focusing, like right here. Like, quite honestly, why don't we just put a price on here, get rid of this, slap it up there, and I just feel like it makes sense. It just makes sense to me. And I see a lot of other companies do things like that. You know, I don't want to go out and say, like, oh, I'm a Kickstarter expert or anything like that. It's just I pay attention to what people do that works and what people do that doesn't work. You know, I look at hundreds of these campaigns and I just kind of study, you know, and I try to analyze what people are doing well. Ooh, okay. Those are nice minis. Yeah, that close-up of those minis is great. Four unique miniatures. Wow. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought there was only four minis in the game. I'm nine minutes into your Kickstarter campaign, and I'm finding out there's more than four minis? Okay. Four unique miniatures plus the 24 nest miniatures. Wait, so... These are... Oh, okay. Okay, so there's 24 nest miniatures, one rule booklet, plastic insert. I'd love that, that was clickable. I'd love, hopefully you show me more of your rule booklet here. Four leader cards. Okay. 
36 action cards. Okay, so 40 cards. That's, that's not a lot of cards. Worries me a bit. Worries me a bit, but it's an area control game. So it's not the end of the world. Six solo mode cards. Like it. Eight season cards. Four modular island boards. Once again, I'm looking at all this, and I just what all I want to know is the price. And you just won't give it to me. You won't give it. One first player marker. I do like the fact... I actually really like this. I like the fact that you were clearly telling me that this is cardboard. I think that is something that needs to be the industry standard. Because a lot of times in games, we will have different materials in the box. Especially when we start dipping into stretch goals. So I, I like this. I want to see this become more uh, of what we do. That cardboard there. That's nice. 24 nest i like how you're showing me from the side angle right here that's really nice as well that shows me the thickness of these the two cloth bags now are the two cloth bags are those the stretch goals or is it just gonna because they're gonna be embroidered embroidered okay so you're gonna make the cloth bag fancier so it's not that you're adding a bag it's just the bags fancier i guess you know what that's that's a neat stretch goal i guess is it for me you know what I don't like that stretch goal, personally. You know, I always have, like, the stretch goal test, and, like, I'm always looking for bangers. Bangers are the ones who are like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited about that. I don't think many people are excited about, oh, now there's a logo on this bag. But let me know what you think. You know, for me, personally, when it's upgraded, like, component quality or something like that, that's what gets me. But just printing, you know, something on the bag? I don't know. Let me know what you think about that particular stretch goal. Design not final. Colors and shapes may vary in final game. Free early bird. Okay, cool. Power plus goal expansion. $10. Cool, cool, this is great. You're telling me the price. You've already told me of friendly shipping, and you've told me the price of the expansion that I can get if I'm an early bird, all right. I love the fact you've told me all that. You know what else I would love the, the fact you would tell me? The price. Like, you've literally talked to me about the shipping and an expansion, and I still don't know the price of the dang game. Like, ah, it frustrates me. Go look at a bunch of other Kickstarters and see what the industry standard is. I feel like too often, I, I just get the impression that a lot of these Kickstarter companies don't go look at really successful kickstarters to see like these little details that make it more user friendly this is great though and especially that's 24 cards i was a little bit i would yeah because i was complaining about the lack of cards earlier and you're telling me this expansion has 24 cards so everyone's going to want this pretty much as a gamer i believe everyone will want this expansion cool uh power cards awesome update mini expansion cards included in higher award teeds including dodos writing dinos and or word of oh this is i don't like this i don't like this right here uh you know what maybe uh, mini expansion included in higher award tiers include yeah you know what i don't have an issue with it whatever it, i thought i thought it was something else fifth player extension unlocks so you're talking to me about stretch goals okay cool and, and i do like the fact we're doing stretch goals for specific backer numbers i love that you know i have no issues with that at all that's a big one though you're not even at 900 so 1600 so this is what would I, I would call this a banger of a stretch goal adding another player is spectacular that adds so much more playability to your game uh especially when you get to the medium weight level because a lot of those are two to four players but this is a long ways away 1600 backers so you're telling me the next stretch goal is 1600 backers that's a ton of backers so why am i coming back like, I know, like, from day to day to day to day, we're probably not going to be hitting this 2,541. But maybe you are. Maybe this thing's just going to explode. But I will say, from right now, the whole point of me coming into this was to try and pinpoint why this is the second most popular game on all of tabletop games right now. And I don't see it. I'm not seeing it just yet. Let me know, Chad, if you're seeing what it is. Because I'm not. it hasn't clicked with me yet. I thought that was a good video. I didn't think it was amazing, though. Uh, so this is a cool stretch goal. Uh, it's going to be really hard to hit. Power plus goal expansion. Included in all... So you told me about it here, and now we're talking about it again. And then... So you told me about it here, and then you mentioned to me, oh yeah, it's also going to be in bigger pledge levels. And then, like, literally 30 seconds later, like, okay, here's those... It's like, why... Like, I don't know. It just seems odd to me. And then power plus goal expansion included on all the Kiwi plus reward tiers. Well, here's an idea... Then, then put the little picture of it right there. And put the little picture of it right there. And put the little picture of it right there. Like, doesn't that seem like a no-brainer to me? I don't know. Gameplay. Cool. I'm glad we're into gameplay. Hopefully there's some videos. There's moving parts of pictures. You know what I'd love? Still a price. Download the rule booklet. Great. That's a check mark ticked. But let's let's go back to your, 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 your thing. Because I did want to look at that. Because I remember I was underwhelmed by it. Especially... 
you know, and what I always like to do this, let's look at your what you did in your little blurb as opposed to what the other most popular people did in theirs. And let's see how much more information they gave us. An epic Victorian mad scientist game and joined over the course of three, uh, you would assume it's game. So it's like a mini legacy game. I know. Feed, grow, and push, or explode. A bombastic game for one to four players with. I know nothing about your game except for there's minis. And there's flags. Marvel United returns with the X-Men, bringing brand new features. So this one, this one's for an expansion, so you kind of give it a pass because it's not really telling you much about the game. But once again, there's information that could be conveyed here that was not conveyed here. And how many people are not going to click on it? Wow, that is amazingly gorgeous artwork. Jesus. All right, so let's take a look at the rules. Game setup. Okay. I like the game setup. It's very in-depth. Objective. Text is a little bit tiny. But how many pages we got here? Uh... 11 and on the back we're gonna have a reference guide and faq that's spectacular love it great 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 and it says send us your question one player mode uh not filled in a little bit nervous about that but hey what happens either way the rule book is there that's good to see quick rules so this is just a minute 30 of you pretty much telling me how the game plays okay it's good to have um all this stuff is good to have everything you have is good to have you know what else is good to have your price Come on. Come on. And the more I scroll, the more annoyed I get at the fact that you make me go over here. This is your story. It should be seamlessly interweaved into here. Because I have asked. I have put up polls. Not everybody goes straight to the price. Most people, I don't think, go do go straight to the price. We're here for the ride. It's fun to go through these Kickstarter pages. Uh, kind of just a preview. This is a preview. Is it a gameplay? Is it gameplay? Nope. It's... Don't care. Oh, that's the intro. How to play. There we go. This is what you want to see. Tutorial playthrough. 39 minutes. So that's a whole play of it. I was hoping for maybe a shorter playthrough video, like one of those 10 minute ones. I think those are really what people love to see, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, that... Gameplay videos are spectacular. Because that really tells you exactly if you're going to like the game. But when I see a 10 minute video that's nicely made, and it's like, these are from... Okay, so this is how exactly how I'm going to be able to play the game. I know when I get this, it's not going to sit on my shelf for months and months and months because I don't want to dig through the rule booklet because there's a 12 minute video right there. That immediately is going to get your game more played. just And it's going to get people more excited, more backed, I would say. So I love seeing stuff like that. Media reviewers, play the demo in Tabletopia. Media. Play the demo in media reviewers. Media. Oh, this is United States media. Okay. The game is complex but fun the game is complex but fun i i didn't realize that those two were counterintuitive but okay it feels like a much brighter version of something like scythe it feels like a brighter so a smarter version of a game like scythe so not it feels like a smarter version of scythe it feels like a smarter version of something life... Like, this is a terrible quote. And I'm not I'm not putting in a Polaroid polar bears, even though I don't understand what you're saying. And I do that all the time, so much love. But the fact that you would pinpoint this quote... Like, it's not... Like, just, just because you have the word scythe does not mean we're all gonna just... Woo! Take our pants off and rip our wallets out. You know, you can't just drop scythe in here and it feels like that's what you're doing. I can totally see this suit a table both at a simple family game night, but also hit up a more serious event. It's a definite one to get a game night for. It's definitely one to get a game night for. It's definitely a game to get a game night for. What the hell does that mean? Are you trying to tell me the solo version sucks subliminally? <laughs> like, I'm trying to understand. I feel like... And I'm, once again, I'm not putting it on Polaroids. I don't know who that is, but I'm putting it on them. Like right here, this is the quote. I can totally see this suit at a table, both at a simple family game night, but also hit up a more serious event. Bingo! That's a great quote. In, out. Oh, cool. I can play this with my eight-year-old, and I can play it on game night. That's what I want to know. End of the conversation. The rest of the stuff is weird that you would keep it. I found myself enjoying this game much more than I expected after just reading the rules, which says that it, uh, it's got, it's deceptively... What's the word? Deceptively um, got more choices than it might appear to at first glance. That's good to know. If you're looking for a family-friendly game that looks good, is fun to play, and keeps you thinking, I remain Kiwi Chow Down. Looks good. Don't care. Fun to play. Good to know. Keeps you thinking. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm not a fan of the shorts. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the quotes. Kiwi Chow Down shorts tutorial. Oh, one minute. Really? 
One minute. Converge trying to take control of the dominance of the number of Kiwi tokens and or control nests outnumber all other players. In a season, each player takes turns playing cards. There are three main actions. Okay, so this actually does look like a very helpful video. I don't know if I'd want to try and learn the rules to it necessarily, but after I read the rules, this looks like the kind of thing that would be a great thing to watch. Uh, so I, I do like that one there, actually. We have different languages. Uh, stretch goals. Funded. $25,000. Asymmetric flocks. Uh, oh, so that's already unlocked? Oh, wow. That's way better than these bags. Why am I just now finding out that this has already been unlocked and now it's in the game and it's even better? Like, I... And what I mean by that is when you have unlocked a stretch goal, you need to be banging the drum. Like, check it out! Your game's got better value! Like, you should have a big thing next to it so I know that, oh, before, this did not have different asymmetric flocks, but now it does? Like, that's a banger of a stretch goal, I think, right there. Anything that's going to add asymmetrical is good. So then, embroidered cloth bags at $65,000, don't care. Uh, fifth miniature plus card, Pia, that's the one people want. I think that, and let me know, but let, let's be quite frank. If you had to choose in your game, oh, would you like an extra mini and a card? Uh, would you like an embroidered cloth bags? Or would you like asymmetric flocks? People are going to say like, hmm, well, two of those will actually impact gameplay, and one of them, I don't care. And, and so, yes. Uh, and so, but you do, you can't have all amazing stretch goals. I understand that, but, uh, I would put this higher. And why are you, I understand that's the next one. And it's kind of weird. So you're doing both money and you're also doing number of backers. So a new chicken is coming to Kiwi Island. I don't know what that means. Um, is that, is that a mini? Is that a piece? I'm ex I mean, I, I guess I, wait, you did tell me. You already told me. It was uh, the thing. You showed me earlier, and I, I said, oh, wow, 2,500, that, that's that's a really big goal. Uh, so why did you show me there, but now you're like, ooh, cryptic, oh, just a picture. I don't, like, get rid of this picture and put the other thing. Or better yet, I don't I don't even know. It's just kind of odd that you just plunked in that fifth, oh, it's the fifth player expansion, that's what it is. Yeah, this is a banger! This is a banger of a stretch goal, and you're hiding it, making it cryptic. No, no, don't hide the fact that this could be a five-player game if I get my friends to join. Now... That being said, there is a counter-argument to that, because then there's the argument, well, why didn't you just make it a five-player game in the first place? And you say, well, probably because it drags that 90-minute time to 180 minutes, which I hope is not the case. I hope. I hope. I'd love to see a gameplay video of you playing at five players. Uh, secret stretch goals. 4,227 backers. Holy God. That's a lot. A Dodino is running towards Ki Kiwi Island. Once again, no clue what that means. Not excited in any way, shape, or form. Now, imagine if I was more into the world and I understood that, I might be excited, but right now I'm not. I, I, I don't know what it means. <laughs> Community goals. So you have tons of different ways for people to unlock it, which is why... Oh! Ding, 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 ding! Have you been waiting for the answer to the question of how you get to be the most second most popular game on all of Kickstarter? I think we're going to get to it right here. Because... I don't see anything else this Kickstarter is doing particularly spectacular. No, no, no offense there. I think they're doing everything pretty competently, except for that. Jesus, have I, I thought, do I still not know the price? I know the price, right? They told me the price. I still don't know the price, don't I? I'm going to keep scrolling and I'm going to find out. I'm gonna, I don't know the price and I'm going to cry. Damn it! No! You've talked about everything else and I still don't know the price. Come on, people. Why? Why would you bury the price? Okay. Let's keep going. Hopefully the price will be somewhere down here of what I'm getting. All right, but this I do believe is how they are number two, uh, is these community goals. Unlock new surprises for each community goal unlocked. To participate, use public sharing settings and include the hashtag KiwiChowdown so the world can enjoy your post and join to the campaign, but also so we can find and tally the post. So I wonder if part of Kickstarter's popularity algorithm, and I'm spitballing here, because I don't think they've officially revealed everything about it, uh, but I could be wrong, maybe it has something to do with hashtags and with how popular things are on other social media sites. Unless, unless there's something that I'm missing here that would lead you to believe that this should be number two popular. Like, what else is making this the number two most popular project on Kickstarter? Because I don't see it. Is it these 20 TikTok videos? Doing Kiwi stuff? New selfies on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Uh, to the tune of the final countdown. But, it, and I think this is it. 
So we got YouTube, uh, Kickstarter stuff, TikTok stuff, Twitter stuff, Instagram stuff. So you got people, and I bet that's what it is, because you have people coming from all different sectors of the internet to this Kickstarter campaign, and you know who notices that? Kickstarter notices that and says, oh, shoot, they're doing something good. What are they doing good? We don't know because it's, you know, it's artificial intelligence, but we got to pump it to the top. Uh, and hence, it's number two ahead of hundred thousand plus dollar games and RPGs and stuff like that. So hats off, that, off to them. And if you want some solid advice right there, these community goals, I'm, that's the only thing I'm seeing. That's why they're number two. So excellent creature kingdoms. Since we plan the Avian Trilogy to be merged into a single game experience... What? I'm about to sneeze. I apologize. Don't do it. I didn't do it. It's up to you to choose how you would like this to happen. So, what you're saying is... You're trying to Century Spice Road this. Where I can play all three of these games together in an epic experience. And I'm just now finding out about it 25 minutes into the game. I saw you post... Like, hey, we got add-ons to get the other games. And I said to myself, I don't even know if this game is going to be good. I've never heard of you. I've never heard of anything you've done. Why the hell would I possibly want to splunk down for two other games that I know absolutely nothing about? And now I see that it is quite literally a trilogy that is meant to be played one after the other after the other. And as an avid hardcore gamer and an Omni gamer, uh, that excites me to no end. You know, I have a buddy. I do a Thursday night game night with my buddy Brandon. And him and his roommate, they do, uh, what is it, the, 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 the Western Frontier Saga, where they'll play through all three of the games in a day or something like that. I remember they were talking about potentially doing it this last weekend. So this is something that's very appealing to gamers, especially if all three games are good. But why is it so low? You know, the fact that you have not mentioned this in any way, shape, or form until here, I just feel like it's a misstep. All right. This poll will be available very soon, and I do love polls. Polls are a spectacular way to get your people coming back to your Kickstarter. Excellent. Pledge manager. We've been working with Backer Kit to manage your pledge orders and process. Cool. I don't care. We ship the Stonemeyer way. Wow. Okay, so that right there is a juicy little nugget to drop, and I love seeing that in your shipping section. You know where I'd love to see that even more? Right next to the cost. The cost and then the shipping, and if you drop that, that you have studied how to do the shipping, I immediately, I'm excited, and let's see these prices. $12 to $18. Is that a good price? I don't know. I don't have a concrete feel for the box. So let's scroll up. Have you given me a concrete feel for the box? This doesn't look like a particularly big game to ship. This looks like you could fit it into, okay, so $12 to $18 in the United States. I'm a little bit not happy about that, because once again, and now, you know, this one makes it look like a smaller box than this one does. This makes me think it's a Ticket to Ride style box. This makes me think, you know, it's like one of these boxes right here. And that's just, it's not, you know, why why do that? Like, I always love when you show me the dimensions of the box. Because look, now you're kind of trying to show me that it's thick. That it's thick. So I do think it's a thicker style box. But once again, when I get to the price and I don't have a feel for how big the box is, I start to second guess the cost of that shipping. Not to freaking mention, I, you've talked. Oh! I'm so frustrated right now. I'm so frustrated. I know about your expansion. I know about your add-ons i know about your shipping i know about your shipping method and you still have not told me the price of your game how who did you did you blind play test this this should the segment should be blind but play testing kickstarters because how did you possibly like yeah, it's frustrating all right mexico 12 to 18 dollars canada 18 to 24 dollars that seems pretty reasonable EU, then extra copies. This is great. So they're trying to ship it all over the world. I love this. So this is, I feel like this is a really solid shipping section at first glance. You know, I was like when they convert it to the different currencies, even though people say you can't do that, even though I saw a Kickstarter where they did that yesterday, and it was beautiful, and it was brilliant, and oh my gosh, I should remember their name so I can shout them out, but the rest of the Kickstarter was rough. Anywho, continuing onward, this is, this is a very solid kick, Kickstarter section, and it tells me that you want your game to go all over the world. And when I see that, I immediately have a higher opinion of you as a company. Just in general. I see these Kickstarters where the shipping to other parts of the world is not that friendly. And I say to myself, that kind of sucks. You know, why not take the extra time and effort to make it more friendly? And they did that, and that looks good on you, Detestable. 
So kudos. Local pickup. Even better. You're making it easier. Love this. Excellent. You have the option to choose this in backer kit with wave shipping. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love what you're doing there. Meet the team. We got ourselves a solid team. I believe it. There's a lot of great information. There's a lot of great stuff on this Kickstarter page. Just not a price. <laughs> Does it have any NZ? I don't. I don't. I don't know. How is key down? No, this is good. This is great stuff to have. Retailers, cool. Oh, oh. So here we go. Fifty percent off the MSRP. So sixty-five dollars. So I now finally know what the MSRP is. So I know the MSRP of your game. I know about the expansion. I know about the add-ons. I know about the shippings, and I still don't know about the actual price that you want me to pay. Come on, man. <laughs> Detestable games on Facebook, Detestable games on, I think that's YouTube? Yeah. Uh, it, okay, so yeah, and this is great. Here you go. Here you go. If you want to know, and trust me, you already knew the answer. I already knew the answer deep down. Social media. Look at this. They got people coming from Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Facebook again. Uh, okay. <laughs> Twitter, another Instagram. So they got people coming from all over the freaking internet to check out their thing. Not to mention, they're sending people to KickTrack, which means then KickTrack is going to send people back to here. So they have cracked the code. Get the internet coming to your project from all sorts of different locations. Because let's look at this. Like, I mean, <clears throat> it's not that they're just blowing away the number of backers. It's not that they have a pre-existing IP or like an amazing, spectacular idea or anything like that. It's just... They're, they're plucking those social media, they're tickling those Kickstarter algorithms in all the right ways, which is why you need to check out those three links down below. They're great links. They talk about how you can do that on Kickstarter, and, and but they, they don't look like they need them. Update. All higher reward trailers will include mini expansion for free. Yeah, this seemed odd. It seemed kind of tacked in when you talked a little bit about that, uh, which is interesting. What's the difference between Larger Than Chicken Army and Crush the Dodo Tears? Uh, yeah, that shouldn't be an FAQ. It should be very clear. Because once again, oh my god, oh my god, we just went to the FAQ and I don't know the price. What is wrong with you, Detestable Games? I quite literally, is so if I, you did not mention the price at any point in this 31 minutes of me searching your thing. So now I specifically have to go over here to ask for help. Okay, fine. How much is your damn game? Print it, play, at home, I don't care. It's great. You have it there. 26 backers. Cool. Larger than chicken. $59. So that pretty much makes me feel like it's the cost of a big box games plus your shipping. So we're looking at $78. So $78 value. Do I feel like this is a $78 value? And the answer is no. Like immediate. Just like I, I, I'm no. Nothing about this has really swayed me that much. So the the immediate answer is I can't give this a two. I was at the rating scale. A two means back it for the whale. Feel comfortable that it's probably going to be a dang good game. It's probably going to happen, and they know what they're doing. Uh, and nothing like the quotes didn't particularly grip me. You know, I was annoyed at the fact. But this oh, this looks cool. That season card stuff. Okay. So, $59 right now, plus you got the shipping. Do you handle the shipping in here? It's always nice when people do that. Oh, no, this is just the early bird. So, if you're actually going to get the version of the game that everyone wants, uh, it does look like a nice Kickstarter. I just, I just wish they would have got, to, I wish they would have done their pledge levels way better. Because um, right now they, they did them, I, actually, I, actually, I can't even say I wish they'd do their pledge levels way better. I wish they would do their pledge levels at all in their story. But, but anywho, so $59. So let's pretend that you're not one of these first 2,541 backers. So they're going to have the early bird go until they unlock the five-player game. And then we will get the regular version of the game, which is $62. Plus, what was it, $15 to $18 for shipping. So we're, we're, we're creeping up to around $70-something dollars here. And that's without the expansion. So I see why they added it to those tiers. Because here's the thing. Once anyone backs any one of your tiers, you can't touch it. You can't mess with it. You can't do anything with it, which really stinks. Which is why they're hitting the pavement so hard to say, Oh, 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 there's more value. There's more. There's, 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 wait up, wait up. Um, we're going to throw in that expansion. That expansion, you got it. All for you if you go get those big ones. So they immediately... 
and, and I applaud them for that. You know, it sounds like a, like a, I'm saying that in a negative way. No, they saw that there was going to be people who are like, this does not look like a good value. I'm, I'm here right now, actually. Uh, and so they tried to get in front of it. At least that's what it looks like. And I think that's interesting. Okay. Second milestone in the creature. Ki- get the limited Kickstarter edition of Kiwi Chow down in this tier. We include the Power and Goals mini expansion for free. Thanks for joining us. Wait, so this is another early bird. Wait, what? The first milestone in this creature. Get the limited Kickstarter edition. In this tier, we include the Power and Goals mini expansion for free. Thanks for joining us since... So you have, okay, you have tiered, they have tiered early birds. Why did anyone take this early bird? I'm so confused. Okay, so that was in the FAQ, yeah. What's the difference between these? There's no difference. We want to break the record from War for Chicken Island and Dodo Riding Dinos. Consider one as an earliest bird and the other one as an early bird. That just absolutely screams, oh shoot, we found out very quickly that the price we're asking for is too high. Like, and maybe it's not. Maybe that's not the case. But let me know in the chat, please. I want to know. Is that what you're getting? What? That's what I'm smelling right here. And when I smell that, I like you less, Detestable. Because that just reeks of not being transparent with your backers. Now, once again, this is all speculative. I don't want to assume this, but it just looks like it. It really does. And I'm not going to lie about stuff like this. Like, it looks like you're like, oh, shoot, we got to fix this. A- and you did it, but now it looks clunky. Um, so you took, you whopped three bucks off. Or maybe, or, I don't know. I don't know. This is, such, this is so odd. Kiwi Chowdown Kickstarter Edition. So, assuming they somehow get the 4,000 plus backers, and that's a lot of backers. Then this is what people will get. $65. It will in not include the expansion. And it seems like a pretty poor value. Yeah, it's a lot of money. For for This is not impressive to me. You know, and part of the reason why it's not impressive at first glance is, once again, you kind of oofed it here. I really do feel like. Because let's look at this picture right here. You say, oh, cool. It looks, it looks cool. And then there's 24 more minis? That, yeah, these! Like, this is... Why would you not showcase this? But, like, it just seems odd, once again, that you have this, and then you have that. So let's look at this, and then look at this, you know, $80 to $90 cost that, that it's going to cost you. And so far, not seeing it. Cool. Got some cool little minis. Whatever. Once again, I don't know their size. I don't really have a feel for their size. Show me their size. Particularly in millimeters and inches would be great. Uh, because maybe it's just a lack of perceived value. These are really gorgeous looking minis. We're getting a whole bunch of them. Eight of each. Once again, what are their size? Plastic insert. How about, So this makes it look like it's a pretty thick box. Yeah, that makes it look like it's one of those really thick boxes like this. Which, once again, was not the impression I get from right here. Because I said ticket to ride. Or in the other picture. So now I am getting three different impressions on the size of your box because you didn't just get in front of it. And when you don't get in front of things like that, that's when the perceived value goes down. When I get to that Kickstarter segment, when I, or when I get to the shipping segment, I'm adding up all these costs and I'm not impressed. I'm just not. The minis do look good. They look like damn good minis. All right, but let's go back over here. So we have the two Kickstarters early birds that are the exact same we have the print and play cool we don't have access to pledge manager whatevs uh kiwi so this is 65 dollars, and this is the retailer but no there's more oh so this is and then this is if you want just one of the other games which i imagine not many people do 14 and then if you want all the games which i imagine is 32 and then oh no, no no this is if you want two of the games kiwis plus chickens oh okay get it and this is if you want everything and 25 people jumped into that it's limited to 50. Odd. Okay, maybe it's because they only have a certain number of uh, back order uh, left to sell. Interesting. So, right now I'm kind of flabbergasted at this campaign. Because, don't forget, this is the number two most popular project in all of Kickstarter right now. And nothing, at all, screams to me. Top ten. Like, unless there's something I'm missing... Nothing about this Kickstarter looks like it should be anywhere near sniffing distance of the top 10. Which makes me believe that the reason why they're doing it 
is because they have people coming from all different sectors of the internet. They have those stretch goals, the secret unlock things that have people coming from different sectors of the internet. So if you want a huge piece of nugget of advice from this, that's what I'd recommend right now. Hit the social media harder. Uh, Kiwi Tribe, welcome to the Kiwi Island. Fun in one hour. All right. So let's see. This journey will be unforgettable. Journey full of surprises. The first step is done. The campaign is funded. Now we'll push for stretch goals. And that's another thing as well. I would move all that stuff up higher because now you are no longer worried about making this game. You're trying to make this into a five-player game. You're trying to make... And that's the other thing that, that looks kind of bad on you. It looks like if you wouldn't have hit certain... It looks like you could have made... I don't know. It just looks to me like the stretch goals are just us unlocking what the game should have been. <laughs> Which never looks good, but let me know what you think about that. Uh, tons of replayability are coming! Cool! Was there not before? <laughs> like, once again, that goes back to me scoffing a little bit at the number of cards in this game. Like, it just has that feel of like, hey, make sure you get, uh, you share this with your friends so that way we can actually make the uh, the good game that we want to make and not, the, you know, the the game without the asymmetrical flock abilities and the, 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 the cards and, the, you know, uh, the fifth player and um, all that stuff that we actually won in the game. Like, it just, it just looks bad. <laughs> all right, what do we got? War for Chicken Island. But wait, these cards are not enough. We told you there'll be a bunch of surprises, right? We will help. Need your help for the next type of cards. They're almost the worst locked secret in the Creature Kingdom, so we count on you for the polls for the crossover cards. Uh, did you already look at the secret 25, 41, and 42, 27 stretch goals? What do you mean secret? How are they secret? Like, they're, they're displayed. In fact, one of them you mentioned twice. <laughs> That's not secret. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> there's no replayability yet. Apparently not. Apparently we have to unlock the replayability. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, just that just... That's not a good thing. Like, you put that there. Like, just don't put that there. <laughs> Which will be the next ability for Scully? Uh, I misspelled there. No big. I don't really care about that. I misspell things all the time. Just pointing it out. So let's us stop writing. It seems to you to reach the next stretch goals, and we are still funding this update. Did you like this first update? What would you like to see happen in the Kiwi Island? Leave your answer in the comments. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! This is exactly what I talk about all of the time. And I want to spotlight something right now. Where was it? Maybe it'll work with this one. Look at how many comments they have. They already on this, and they just launched, I believe today, have, what is it, eight comments on this. Four comments. Okay, so it's not nearly as much. But let's go look at the updates over here. It wasn't this project, so I'm hoping it's, it's right. Uh, so 23, 10, 18, no it's not. But, but three, actually look right there. Three, that's a great example, right there. That one right there. This is a bad update. I can immediately tell you this is a bad update because there's only three updates. There's only three comments. You gave them no room to talk. And you need to get them talking, which is how you're going to tickle those Kickstarter algorithms. This one already has four for, for a game that has way, way, way less backers. This has 5,000 backers. This has 969 backers. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And they ended with a question, which tells me that they, they know what they're doing here on the social media. Like, and wowzers. Wowzers. Just excellent. Did you like this first update? What would you like to see happening? And what do we got? Ah, number of backers of the two previous campaign. It will be a great campaign again. Okay, I understand it now. It's because that's how many backers you had on the old campaigns. Why not tell me that? It's like, it's like if I thought my wife was cheating on me, and she says, no, I've just been sneaking around because uh, I, I found this new gas station I like to go to because they have good cinnamon rolls or something. I'd be like, well, why wouldn't you tell me about it? Why would you sneak around? Why you gotta make it look shady and nefarious? Like, the things you did in your Kickstarter don't look good, and there's a reason why you did them. So I, I would let us all in on the gag, I guess. Because, once again, I was speculating the, the worst. And I hate to do that, but I see Kickstarters all the time that do those things. And it is unfortunately probably for the worst reasons so this this is very refreshing okay the way it was worded in the update made it sound like it was already somewhere in the kickstarter haha -ha. what are the stretch goals i didn't see them under the stretch goals uh if we hit to that oh so apparently they just put those up there which might explain their clunky positioning i would readjust those and, and i even i mentioned it <laughs> like uh okay that explains a lot Wait, there's two campaigns. What are the other? So the other two games, uh, I, they did two other games, I'm assuming, and they had this number of backers. And that's why they created the confusing <laughs> double pledge levels. I think, maybe, I don't even know. 
I want to assume the best, but it just, like, why would you just have one random one that's three to, I don't know. I don't know. Anywho, that is Kiwi Chowdown. A lot of thoughts on this one. I'm going to give it a one. Can't give it a two. Don't feel comfortable with the gameplay enough for that. But I would say, quite honestly, watch one of those gameplay videos. See if it's your style of game. It's going to go over for you. Back it for a dollar. Or back one of the early birds. Come back in the last 48 hours and decide if they've unlocked enough. You know, if they've, if they've actually unlocked the game with replayability or not. I, and I hate to dog them for that. But come on. Don't, don't put that there. Don't put that there. Uh, but if you enjoy what I'm doing... Uh, as always, thank you for coming along on these rides, because I, I never quite know what I'm getting into with these Kickstarters, uh, so if you enjoy them, please let me know in the comments any thoughts you have about anything I said, or what you agree or disagree with, in particular, what you disagree with, because I love knowing other people's Kickstarter shopping, buying habits, and it does kickle the Kickstarter algorithm, I know you're like, yeah, you're just trying to tickle that YouTube algorithm, like I am, but at the same time, when I hear, you know, like eight different people say, oh, I really like when a Kickstarter does this. I'm like, okay, so there is a group of people who like this sort of thing. And it, it helps, I feel, like make these videos overall better uh, just the more I know about Kickstarter in general. But, as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Bye-bye. Wait, that's not the right one. This is the right one. Yes. <laughs>